when I was about third grade, uh, my mother had an affair with somebody that came to cut some wood for my grandparents. Um, this was a, a pretty horrific person. The guy was a, an alcoholic, a chain smoker, and she had this affair with this person. And at the end of the summer, she says, I'm leaving your dad for this guy. So again, I'm like nine years old. And so she told my, my sister, my brother and I this, and I said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And she told me, she said, you know what? I always knew you would be the son to turn against me. Luckily, though, my dad came over from Spokane at the end of the summer, and they were able to kind of put their marriage back together. But at the end of the sixth grade, um, the marriage came completely apart. We didn't go to church anymore at that point. So, you know, following uh, Christ certainly wasn't something that we thought about. And it was pretty much a worldly lifestyle. My mom started dating at that time my stepdad who was an alcoholic. She did end up marrying him eventually, a couple years later. Before she married him though, uh, my brother and I went to visit my dad in Spokane, and he was killed on his bicycle when he was 11 years old. That was 14. And it was a tough time. My mother had been notified. She was in Oklahoma with my soon-to-be stepdad. She did not know what son had died. When I saw her several days later, she told me, she said, I didn't know which one of my sons was dead. I was hoping it was you and not your brother. And that was, that was hard on me. And uh, I carried that for a lot of years. Eventually though, I did get over it and I forgave my mother for that. My mother ended up getting sick when I was in college with cancer and, and she did end up dying at, at the age of 48. Shortly after she died, I got married. I married a, a woman that had three children. And we had two children of our own together. Um, we did go to church, you know, and I kind of considered myself a Christian, but I wasn't real faithful. I didn't go as often as she did. Once in a while, I would start to feel a little bit guilty and go back to church and recommit my life to Christ, but it never really, it never really held with me, and, I, and the reason was because I didn't really see the whole loving God aspect of things. When my daughter was three and my son was one, uh, my wife divorced me. And it was very hard on me because I loved my children so much. Eventually, I, I ended up getting a job here in Lima. My son came to live with me for a while. My daughter was over to here. She'd come out to live here. And he's like, you know, Dad, are we going to go to church? We tried a couple of churches, and uh, we ended up at, at Shawnee Alliance. But it was during the service that night that, that it was mentioned, there was a reference to a Johnny Cash movie. But in that movie, there was reference to um, Johnny's father saying something about the wrong son dying. And that brought back That brought back the memory of what my mother had said to me. It was, it was God speaking to me. In a way that he never had before. And he said to me in a sense, I felt it. It's just how much I love you. And I really saw him then as this uh, God of love. And I haven't looked back since. And it's a lot easier for me to follow um, a God that loves me rather than a God I'm afraid of. It, it just makes more sense. And, and that's what he is. God is love. Ten years ago, I woke up. Uh, one morning and very unexpectedly my husband was gone so I'm a single mom right now here we go and when you lose someone to death in a sudden fashion you don't get to say goodbye you don't have the heartache of watching them be sick a day at a time like someone does when they have a cancer but 
at least in those in that case, you get to tell each other the things that you really wanted to make sure you said. We didn't get to do that. I will tell you though, that beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know where he is. And I know that I will see him again someday soon. That was one of the ways we survived it. A lot of changes happened. Uh, I lost my husband, then sent my first one off to college. And um, in December, my boss retired and she was more than just my boss. She was my dear, dear friend. But the only way we survived, the only way I survived was with Jesus. He put so many people in my path and the path of, our, of my kids that carried us. And I just was ready for a change. I was ready to go to a, a, a different church. So some friends and I were like, well, what do you think? Maybe we should, maybe we should try Shawnee Alliance. A July Sunday, a couple of my girlfriends and I came here to church. Come to find out, we both started worshiping here almost to the same Sunday mm -hmm. in, the, in that summer of 2014. Right. And I totally believe that that was the Lord. So in January of 2015, it was the season of audacious prayer. We had both been going to church here for about six months but didn't know each other at that time. And I was missing my husband so desperately. And I just sat down on my couch and I cried and I prayed. I really yearn to be, you know, in a relationship again. But if that's not what you want for me, you need to show me that and make it real, real clear that you want me to be mom, you want me to be daughter, you, you, you want me to be your servant and, and make me happy and make me content in that. And that was my very, very fervent prayer. So Audacious Prayers came along and I, and I had my failed marriage and a whole wake of failed relationships and you know, 30 some years more of, of wild living. Um, worldly living, I should say, maybe not wild, but worldly. And I asked him, I said, Lord, you know, you're probably not going to believe this, but I'm going to ask you for a, another chance. I would like to get married again. And I would like to have some, some Christian friends. Those were two of the ones that, that I asked for. And I could almost, you know, could imagine God smiling. It's like, oh, you're actually going to ask me this time, right? Because I'd never consulted him before. Well, it wasn't very long, and my boss at work asked me, he says, how would you like to meet somebody? Well, and so in March of, of 2015, um, he introduced me to my wife. And it, it's been amazing, because it's amazing because <clears throat> I met the person that God picked out for me, because this was his choice for me. And it's that's why it's such a good relationship. And uh, so I'm very thankful to him for that. But, you know, I think that it's important that people realize, you know, you have to ask God for the, the things that, that you desire, you know, and he's a good God. And, and he's richly blessed me, you know, with my wife. Remember I told you about uh, Jerry the Woodcutter with my mother, I was sitting in the service. The Lord said to me very clearly, he said, when are you going to forgive Jerry? And I said, well, Lord, I guess right now. Then he said something else to me. He said, what makes you think that any of your sins are any different than Jerry's sins? Or anybody else's for that matter? He said one more thing to me, he's like, you don't have any idea what his story was and how he came to be the person that he came to be. And I said, yes, Lord, you're right on that. So what did I learn from that? Not just, it doesn't just relate to, to that man, but to other people, you know, and how I judge other people and look at them and, 
And, and I think all Christians probably do it to, to a degree, you know, where they judge them up. And it's like, well, at least I don't have those sins. And, you know. There's hope. The, the biggest thing we want people to know is that there's hope. There's hope in Jesus. We, our time here, the scripture says, is but a vapor. We have eternity to look forward to. So, yes, we've had struggles. Yes, we are definitely an example of broken together. Um, who knows what tomorrow could be? We're not always going to be together. So, I just want everyone to know that there's hope in Jesus.